Hi and welcome to Under the Brolly, the My Umbrella LGBT Plus podcast. We are currently on episode 5 and today we're going to be talking about straight allies. My name's Steve. And my name's Tom. A reminder of what this podcast is about and why we're doing it. To spread awareness of the lesser known LGBT plus identities, including gender, fetish and kink. Now, many of you may be wondering why this month we're going to be talking about straight allies. Well, as it seems we're kicking off our Pride season and after recently returning from Swansea Pride and with Exeter Pride looming on the horizon this weekend, we felt it was only appropriate to celebrate the fact that without our straight allies and those people out there that help to challenge homophobia, transphobia and biphobia, the LGBT plus community wouldn't be anywhere near where it is currently. And to start with... Let's describe what the actual straight ally flag looks like, because there is a flag, as you may have gathered, there's quite a few flags. Uh, so, Steve, how would you describe this flag? Well, I've described the flag after I've described essentially the differences between the two flags that people often get confused with. So a lot of people that turn up to our Pride events don't identify on the LGBT plus spectrum. Essentially, these are heterosexual individuals. Now, a lot of people that we've speak to previously state that they're actually nothing to do with Pride, and as such, we do take a little bit of pleasure in showing them what the heterosexual flag actually looks like. Now, to describe it to you, the best way is essentially more accurately to describe it as 50 shades of grey, as the flag itself goes from a darker grey to black colour at the top right the way through to the different spectrums with white at the bottom. Now in comparison to the straight ally flag which is a black and white flag with horizontal lines going from top to bottom in the background with a rainbow triangle going from red, orange, yellow, green, blue and then violet purple at the bottom. Now as I'm sure a lot of you can imagine In comparison to the heterosexual flag being 50 shades of grey, most people would want to get behind the straight ally flag, and it's no surprise to the reason why. I really like the uh, heterosexual flag because it does actually look like the rainbow flag in black and white, which kind of is a bit dull really. So when people see that flag, they often don't want to be associated with it, so it's quite nice to have something which is still kind of the same um, ethic behind it. It's got the, the the straight side to it, but it's got the rainbow side that's not necessarily representing someone who's uh, LGBT. It's got the ability to make them feel part of the community even though they may not be identifying as LGBT. So just for um, more clarity and essentially to help people to describe essentially when we say straight ally, the definition that we found um, from our booklet itself states a person who identifies as a heterosexual but supports the LGBT plus communities and the activities. Now that essentially is from our own booklet alone and if you out there listening to our podcast want to know more about the different LGBT plus genders, identities, sexualities, kinks and fetishes, feel free to go onto our website www.myumbrella.org.uk and click on the shop link at the top where you can find a link through to our Etsy store where you can purchase one of our guides to LGBT+. Now, going into more detail, if you go onto Wikipedia, the definition that you actually get from that, as everybody I'm sure knows Wikipedia very well, a straight ally or heterosexual ally is a heterosexual and cisgender person who supports equal civil rights, gender equality, LGBT social movements and challenges homophobia, biphobia and transphobia. Despite this, some people who meet this definition do not identify themselves as straight allies. Now, I'd like to just draw the line at this particular point because essentially just because you're a straight ally will not mean that being involved in a pride event will automatically mean that people will point the finger at you as being part of the LGBT plus spectrum and essentially throwing everything else at you that you feel as though you do not warrant as being associated with the LGBT plus community. If anything I would like to reach out to all straight allies out there as we kick off our pride season and ask that we need you more than ever with everything that's been going on looking at pride in london last year with the l with the t situation that we had and also more recently at some of the more recent events in particular swansea pride we need as much help as possible within the lgbt plus community with our straight allies to stand together as brothers and sisters and allies to really start to push the boundaries of challenging transphobia, biphobia, acephobia, homophobia and all the other phobias that exist out there 
that essentially are quashing and preventing the LGBT plus community from flourishing and celebrating the fact that regardless of what your gender, what your sexuality, what your orientation, what your kink, what your fetish and everything else on top, regardless of where any of those are, love is still love and should be celebrated between all individuals. So if you'd like to see us at some Pride over the summer, we've got a couple coming up for our next episode. So the next one we have is on the 11th of May in Exeter. Uh, I believe that's in the park in Exeter. I believe it's actually Northern Hay Gardens, where uh, we were last year and the year before. Uh, I recall very distinctly that there was a video that exists of us trying to put up a gazebo. Okay. Um, and then on the 1st of June, we are in Oxford for Oxford Pride. Woo! I don't think I've been there before. Have you been there? Well, Oxford? Yeah. It's nice. It's got a college. No, no, no it's I got a university. Pride. Have you been to the Pride? No. Oh, okay. Um, we then have some more throughout the summer, but we'll keep you updated. And also a big thank you to everyone who was involved at Swansea Pride, because we had a little stall there. Apologies that we weren't able to record anything, but we were right by the stage, so it was a brilliant performance, but quite noisy. Mm. There were some fantastic acts on there, and we would like to just reach out to Swansea Pride to say thank you so much for having us there. And if you do want us back, we would love to be back next year. And also thank you for Chrissy for all her help on the day, because we had a small team, but we did well. Small team, but yeah, that's probably the best. That's not accurate way to describe it. Yeah, small team did well. So we'd love to hear from you and your different identities and mm. all the stories you have to tell. Uh, if you would like to meet us at Pride, feel free to come along and I can record some uh, some interviews with you. We can get in touch with us. Yeah, you can get in touch with us for a number of different reasons, uh, or a number of different ways, in fact. Yes, you can email us, which is info at myumbrella.org.uk. Do put in the subject line under the brolly so we know where to send it to and who to send it on to. So if you want to be featured or you think that your gender sexuality, identity, orientation, kink or fetish needs to be featured more prominently, then please get involved. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. Just search for My Umbrella and again use the hashtag under the brolly. Yeah, uh, we're also on Instagram as well. Again, search for My Umbrella. You can kind of see a theme here. And hopefully soon we'll have our own pages available which will uh, advertise on the My Umbrella social media platforms. Uh, until then, we'll see you next month in sunny June. Woo! Bye! Bye.